I'm delighted to say we can go to the Limerick Team Hotel. Dan Morrissey, an All-Ireland winner once again this year, is on the line. Good morning to you, Dan. How are you holding up? Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, hi, yeah. Um, we had a good night last night now. Hi, yeah. It wasn't, wasn't hi, too yeah. late, but um, there's a few of us up in the lobby now this morning getting getting an early breakfast to, to kickstart the day ahead. Name names. Who's up and who who might be the late arrivals? <laughs> William, I don't know who's here beside me. Yeah. Nicky Quaid is floating around there as well. Um, I'd say there'd be a few lads now in bed till, till 11 or 12, I'd say. The, the young lads. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the young lads. So I think the tray we're getting the train back to Limerick there just after lunchtime. So there'll be a few tired heads, but uh, we'll definitely enjoy the next few days. Wait, where did he go last night? Uh, we just stayed here in the Burlington Hotel. Uh, we didn't venture into coffers or anything like that now last night. Um, it was obviously now great to meet the fans and all that because the last two years there wasn't anything. Um, obviously 2020, it was literally we got the train back after the match. And everyone back, went back to their own house. There was nothing we could do at all. Last year, there was, uh, in fairness, there was a nice function back in Limerick. But I suppose, yeah, this year really uh, reminds us of 2018 again. Everything kind of back to normality. Uh, the place was packed here last night. So it was, uh, it was a, great, a great evening. Cause I was just about to say, like, I really felt in the stadium yesterday as if it was right on a par with 2018. That unbelievable outpouring of emotion, having not won an All-Ireland since 1973 in 18. It kind of felt like there was another drought almost going into yesterday because of uh, the COVID years that, that you had to go through. It was incredible, I'd imagine, being a part of it. Ah, oh, it was. Sure. Everything about today, uh, I suppose the weather, how good the game was and how close it was. Um, not knowing who was going to win really till the referee blew the final whistle and then just seeing the green and white of Limerick supporters there like the, the amount of Limerick supporters there yesterday was was phenomenal um, and the way yeah the championship panned out this year like seven games we really had to earn every single game we played um, so yeah it definitely was just as sweet as 2018 um, and yeah as you mentioned the last two years while they were great I know last year was half attendance and obviously no attendance at all for 2020 yeah uh, this one was just special to see everyone back and it means so much to the people at Limerick so uh, I'm sure there'll be a big crowd out to, to welcome us home later on this evening. How tough was it Dan, the game yesterday because we've just been talking with Paulie Marmer saying like, Limerick played so well, it felt like you would have beaten any other team by maybe 8-10 points it, it, you have to check yourself, there was only 2 in it at the end, like, Kilkenny just wouldn't go away Yeah, that's typical Kilkenny, we, they're, they're never beaten until the final whistle goes Um yeah, any time. I think I think we did respond to when when they got the goals. We kind of got our couple of points. So we didn't really let them get a get a lead at all. But uh, it was a, a fierce physical game. Uh, no inches given, and that's that's what you expect when you play Kilkenny. Uh, we probably haven't played them as much over the last five years as we would have say obviously the other monster teams. And uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was a tough game, and uh, just really delighted to to come out on the right side of it. Do you get better at appreciating these moments as the years go by? I presume the first couple are a bit of a, a bit of a flash, and the moments go by so quickly. Are you better at soaking it all in now? Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, sure. Twenty eighteen was just so new to everyone. Uh, the build up, the the week after the game, uh, it just went so quick. Whereas, I suppose, yeah, you do become more appreciative of it to really make to make the most of these days, and you just can't take them for granted. Like, please God, we have another a few All Irelands in us, but. You, you really just have to have to enjoy these days while they're here and uh, look you, you never know what's going to happen down the line please God we'll, we'll be around for another few years but you, you have to enjoy these days for, for Limerick supporters we went through a, a long enough time we're never going to Crow Park um, so to be to be coming to Crow Park on nearly an annual basis for the last few years and, and winning All-Ireland titles it's, it's so new to, to every Limerick person so we'll definitely enjoy it and, and make the most of these few days Can I ask you Dan just about the the sense of history that is attached to, to yesterday's All Ireland. Like as as somebody from the Ahan Club, I'm sure you would have grown up on stories of the legend that is Mick Mackey and his three All Ireland titles. Getting to four All Ireland titles, officially getting one past Mackey, I presume given your own hurling heritage, that's just an incredible thing to think about this morning. Yeah, it is when you put it like that. Um, and to be honest, like before the game, there was no real talk of three in a row between in our group. It was all just this is another All Ireland final, um, and that's the way we like to kind of approach games. Don't put any extra pressure on us. It's we try to approach the first game of a Munster Championship the same as as we did the match yesterday. But um, yeah, I suppose sit back and reflect on it now. So 
to have four All Irelands in in five years, it is it is a special achievement. And um, yeah, obviously that great Limerick team of the Turkeys with Mick Mackey, I would have heard an, heard a lot of stories about about that team growing up. And uh, I suppose to re- to replicate and win and and win four All Irelands, uh, uh, it's just incredible. Like I suppose when I first joined the Limerick panel to to dream of winning one All Ireland would have would have been an amazing achievement or an amazing dream I would have had. But to win four, I don't think many of us would have. Uh, would have thought we would have been in this position going back say, to the start of 2018. What, what sort of reception will yourself and Tom get in Castle Connell then? Because I was down there before the All-Ireland last year. It's a place that is absolutely obsessed with hurling, to say the very least. They're just so unbelievably proud of you in, in a level just that's on the same as their historic rates as well. The, I presume it's just an incredible experience going back down to, to Castle Connell specifically. Ah, it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I suppose the hand is. It's known throughout the country. I suppose Mick Mackey helped put, put us on the map. And uh, yeah, they're really proud hurling people down there, down in Castle Connell. And- well, we have uh, temporarily oh, lost our connection to uh, to the team hotel. We'll get back there in just a moment. And we'll get a couple of other voices as well on the line, hopefully, uh, over the next few minutes. So that's uh, Dan Morrissey having a... Up like at eight fifty eight this morning. Twenty nine, Dan Morrissey is. Uh, I think once you know, once you get past twenty five, twenty six, on as you're discovering, you know, early nights, the key. Take it all in. Yeah, is that is that the truth, Dan? Once you get to the age of twenty nine, this uh, things just start to get that little bit tougher in celebrations. We do not actually have Dan. He's uh, here again. The, the the team the the team hotel and RTE going to the team hotel is one of the great moments of Irish TV every year. They were at the Burlington last night and. Uh, Groot Hegarty's up getting his man of the match from Marty and from Larry McCarthy and in the background the wedding is continuing doesn't matter a hell if we're live on TV they are serving the dessert no matter what it, is quite, so it, it looked quite tasty as well the dessert no expense spared I'd imagine for the All-Ireland champions Yeah. Uh, and the waiter is getting a bit of a telling off from one of the managers going, you know, get it. there's lads over there still waiting on their dessert there's a, some guy holding a sign there was three people at one table still waiting on their dessert it's just full flow what, what was for dessert Dan? Uh, it was kind of a mixture of kind of some sort of an ice cream now. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> it was nice anyway. I ate it. Uh, Dan, one of the great things yesterday was to see Keen Lynch up lifting the trophy with Declan Hannan, and he's such a big personality of that Limerick squad. Can you talk us through the last week from from training when he picks up the injury and, and his role over the last week? Yeah, like we, we played a bit of a match amongst ourselves last Sunday morning and uh, yeah, Keane obviously got a bad knock in his ankle and uh, I suppose we kind of knew coming off that pitch that <laughs> uh, judging by the size of his ankle, he wasn't going to be playing, playing this weekend and uh, I wouldn't mind, but he'd been fine at training all all week. Um, so look, John's always been been saying to us, it's always next man up. We've, we've lost, Over the years, we've lost a lot of lads through injuries, suspensions, different things and it's always next man up and that's the strength of the panel that you need. Um, so look, everyone was bitterly disappointed for Keane and, and for the team because look, he's obviously a, a huge loss to us but at the same time we had faith in our panel and we knew whoever was whoever was going to be playing was going to be able to do the job. Um, so yeah, it, look, it was obviously very disappointing for Keane but he didn't leave that disappointment to overshadow the whole thing. He was back at training Tuesday night with a smile on his face and uh, as if nothing had happened at all and uh, he's just great to even be around. He's obviously had his injury troubles this year but... Uh, yeah, it's 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 just a great bond within the whole squad. Yeah, that's something that has been mentioned quite a bit, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But just uh, quickly again on, on last weekend on the the injury to to Keane, like it sounds like he was good to start or was going to at least be in contention to start before that injury. So, like I mean, he is a talismanic player as much as one can be a talismanic player in your in your squad. When that moment happens, is, is there a couple of groans? Are you thinking, geez, this is not ideal a week out from an All Ireland? Yeah, there is. Part of your look, part of your head will will always think like that. We we saw him go down, and it was in the middle of the game. We had to kind of take a five minute break while while he kind of got uh, lifted off the field. But uh, right. yeah, just part of you, I suppose part of you would be could think it'd be like, oh, this is not ideal preparation for an All Ireland final. But I suppose we've been in situations where we've lost lads down through the years. We've had a lot of cruciate injuries, different injuries, and. We've always just had faith in whoever was the 15 lads on the field and whoever's going to come off the bench were, uh, were going to be able for the job. So, uh, yeah, look, it's never ideal to lose one of your key players the week before an All-Ireland final. But um, at the same time, it didn't it didn't overly worry. Yeah, 
plenty of people trying to get on the hotel Wi-Fi this morning. Live TV. Down All the boys breakfast. are just waking up. I was just going to ask, I wonder who injured Keane Lynch or did he just go over on his ankle, I wonder. I mean, when we get him back. It's the, the bit, the That's bit the I story. want to find out. That's the story. Well, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. I mean, that is uh, pretty remarkable. The, the, like, the, the early signs were that even like before the semi-final that he could have come on and actually started that game. So I think everybody was thinking a week ago, you know, he's definitely going to start this game. And then when the rumours start to circulate earlier this week, you're like, oh God, this could be... Uh, it could be a bit some, something close to a fatal blow, but well, I think again okay you mentioned it. the strength of the squad. Like it shows the strength of the squad that even though Keen Lynch, as you say, is seen as something of a talisman, that nobody could quite figure out who he'd come in and replace yeah. and where he'd fit back into the side. Dan, I was just going to ask you there, who who actually? Is? Oh no, 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 no. We are not going to do that. We keep thinking we have him and then we don't have him. That's okay. He's. Uh, Dear God. Are we keeping him from his breakfast? I wonder. Like the hotel breakfast is obviously the key part of all this. That's a bit early for breakfast yet now, because these lads are going to be on the go all day, aren't they? Early for breakfast. It's nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> if you've been out late, William O'Donoghue, have you had your breakfast? What's the crack? I haven't. I have a cup of tea and that will do me. Grand. Well, we let we... after this. No. <laughs> we let you get to it very shortly. Oh. How are you feeling? All right. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, I like probably obviously still hasn't set in yet and all that kind of stuff, but it's uh, huge, huge feelings of satisfaction and elation, basically, just to see the, you know, see your family and have a night like last night. Um, be mingling with supporters again and you know that's kind of I suppose the overriding feeling is just you know seeing what it means to people again and stuff like that Is there a sense of just trying to capture it all in those moments trying to to appreciate that moment with the family in a way that maybe you couldn't get to do over the last couple of years that the celebrations were almost something that you were looking forward to and planning almost for, for a while now given you didn't get to do it in 20 or 21 um, well, unfortunately, as a player, like you can't really yeah. think about that. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not something that you can have in your mind, or you know, you if you don't go and do your job and look after what you're meant to do, there'll be you know there'll be no celebrations. Um, but I suppose just even just small stuff like seeing Declan um, Declan lifting the cup again to uh, a sea of green. You know, not even as a player, but as a Limerick person, it's just incredible to see and to see the amount of kids who who got to be there again yesterday and witness that and who are growing up obviously during a special time it's just in- incredible what it means to everyone from Limerick not just us as players like Grode was saying in his interview after the match yesterday just how much you all love playing in Croke Park and the Limerick fans absolutely love that place as well it felt like a home stadium a home match for Limerick there yesterday just what is that like in the middle of it all when you hear the big Limerick roars for every score that's going between the posts oh it's incredible like you know um like it, it can give you such a lift and obviously when when you're against an opposition team and stuff like that is happening and that roar you know the, when you're on the other side of it you know it, it can deflate you that small bit so to have who who I would consider the best the best supporters in in the game is is obviously a huge benefit to us and it's a uh, it's something we're very proud to be a part of you know that we give those those people that those days and those moments how different was last night compared to 2018 where 2018 was the end of the famine there was such a wait and nobody really knew what to expect from this Limerick side whereas now there's nothing but expectation on this Limerick side that you will go and deliver on the biggest day Did, does it change the winning feeling? Um, I, don't, I don't think so because as players you obviously and that is the uh, end of that particular segment uh, once again we'll keep going back ask the, over ask the big questions first is what I'm thinking that's it just get, get one in at the start and uh, we'll get back to, to Will in just a moment at the team hotel the um, these lads are looking very fresh Nathan they, well, these guys, it's almost they, as if they're yeah. finally primed athletes or something well, uh, exactly they're, these, they won't say it but these boys are thinking about four in a row yeah, yeah. Oh. That was, there you go Nathan <laughs> oh, that, that it will say it <laughs> They, they won't admit it on air, but about three o'clock this morning, definitely it came up. <laughs> oh, yeah. People will be saying, like, oh, next year's the one. I'm like, it's literally still the same day. <laughs> like, we won, like, we won, like, six hours ago. Like, can you just give it a rest? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember we got it. I remember getting it in the Woodlands last year as well. Being like, oh, next year's the big one. And I was just looking at him, like, you know, I was still sweating from the match. Like, I was like, please, like, will you give me a break? <laughs> Who's saying that sort of stuff? Is, is it Limerick fans mostly? Is it, is it family members? Oh, it's or fans. It's, yeah. No, it's not. I think family members are well warned and well versed on what they can and what, what they can and can't say. Um, it's fans, but I mean, they're they're saying it from a good place. It's just pure joy. It's pure excitement, and uh, you know, it's just it's incredible to have that kind of pressure. You know, it's it's a good thing that that people are are willing that and wanting that because it shows we're in a good place. Uh, was John Kylie singing last night? 
Um, yeah, the the mic dropped on the RT and the, during the live thing, and he started he started uh, the the reset, and he gave us a verse or two of, of piano men, but he uh, he left it at that. So I'm sure he'll. He was saving himself for today for the homecoming, I'd say. Yeah, it is Piano Man, right? It's like Piano Man every year, it and is, that's yeah. it. It's, it's one and done from Kylie, right? I know, he's, no? he has a few in the locker, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What else? Yeah, but Piano Man is the main one. Piano Man is like his, would be the last tune on the set now. He dropped the mic to Piano Man, I'd say. Okay. And what about you? No, no. No, just don't. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> Can you just, talk about, about Kylie and... Uh, and what he's done, what he's done for you, I guess, and what he's done for all this team, and the standards he'd set that you know you have been able to set this relentless pace over the last few years. Yeah, I mean, I, I, John. John is an incredible man, but I think uh, he's no more incredible than the people he's surrounded himself with. You know, he's from everyone to from his management to uh, you know our liaison officers, uh, Joe O'Connell, Connor McCarthy. Avrodi, you know, like John's John strength is surrounding himself with, you know, people who have the same vision as himself, people who are as committed to the, you know, to Limerick GA as he is. And I think when you've that many people all pulling in the right direction, you know, good things are, you you know, you have a chance of good things happening. And uh, you know, John John's an incredible man. He, you know, he, when he took over in 2017, if someone had told had told you guys there at the end of that year that we'd win four out of the next five, I don't think anyone would believe him, and and probably rightly so. You know, there there was no grounds to go off that that would be the case, and he's managed to deliver that for Limerick, and he does it with huge humility and huge pride in Limerick GA, and um, it's just you know, it's I'm very very proud to let's say to be involved with him and and everyone else at the at the minute. Was there a moment? In late 17, early 18, when you realised that there was something a bit different about Kylie, that this was potentially going to lead to something very, very special? Um, no, I don't think there was any one moment. I think just the way he tried to implement um, everything he was trying to implement was positive. You know what I mean? There was no one light bulb moment or anything like that. Everything he did was made sense, was fair to players, the way he engaged with us, the way he mentored us, the way he tried to mould us into being the best people that we could be, um, you know, everything. It was just all encapsulating the way he, he went about it. And uh, it was just a, a setup that you wanted to be a part of and a setup that, you know, you wanted to go train and you wanted to be around the group and you, you know, you wanted to give it your all. Yeah, Dan touched on that a few moments ago as well. And it's been something that's been remarked upon by a lot of your teammates as well over the last few years. The sense that you just love spending time with one another, that like you just love the experience of being in this group. And that's kind of important when you're spending that amount of time with each other. Yeah, it is. I mean, like this week, uh, you know, I was buzzing to go train and buzzing go, to go to the gym this week because, you know, it'll be long enough now that we won't be together. And, you know, during a week where there's obviously a lot of build up and hype and stuff like that, just to be around the lads is, is very calming and it's it's a special place to be. Um, you know, I, I think what helps is like that we all get on. There's no there's no egos. There's no no one person going off on a solo doing their own thing and uh, that obviously helps build a bond and a connection because everyone is everyone is putting in the same amount and everyone's getting the same amount out how does that happen like how, how do you get to that point where uh, a, a bunch of very very talented young hurlers don't actually manage to not one of them seems to develop an ego or seems to, to step out of line at all like how, how does that happen over the last few years uh, I think it's because you know we're not very good hurlers you know that's not what we're about we're about working for another we're about trying to be good people trying to be you know uh trying to be humble trying to you know understand that this is a lot bigger than just us and um you know you know first and foremost we're not just good hurler. you know it's not it's not about the hurling side of it we'll get back uh, to that in just a moment that's uh william o'donoghue there on the line limerick midfielder and uh, about everything else and just good Sorry, well, just dropped, dropped, dropped you there for a sec. We'll just leave you leave you with uh, one last question, maybe just on on the game yesterday was pretty incredible to watch. The score taking was was extraordinary across both halves of, of that match. What's it like being in the middle of all of it? I, I presume a little bit chaotic, and you're not fully aware of of just what a spectacle it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, like I mean, you never really when you're playing like when they get goals and stuff like if you're a Limerick supporter it's probably a lot more deflating but when you're playing you just have to kind of get out reset and you know you very much have to just focus on the next puck out so a lot of it kind of just flies over your head or you don't realise how big a score um, you know some of the points that Tom McCoy got after their goals yesterday because you're, you're probably already turning around or trying to be where you need to be but um, it'll, you know it's 
as a player, I suppose that's the issue. You don't you don't get to savor all those moments. But I'm I'm sure we'll watch it back today and uh, have have good crack while doing so. Four right. in a row, four in a row. Come on, tell us about it. <laughs> I've, I've no idea. I've no idea. Um, I've, I've no idea. Hopefully, we'll just have a good week. And, uh, I'd say you will somehow. Do you, get, get what's the crack with a dare manor? Do you get run of the place at a dare manor? Do you get no, is, is a free golf? Run of the place. No, there's no free. You, have you been talking to Garoad Hegarty? Well, this I, I was. Uh, I ended up following uh, Tiger with Garoad for a few holes. Uh, and I was. Uh, oh, yeah. I was wondering who are the non golfers on the Limerick team that might have a few passes to give up for you know. No, no. Lads. Trust me, there's no golf there. No. We're, uh, Right. No, no, we, you couldn't leave us. You couldn't leave us out in, out in that course. No, <laughs> I, I, I saw you down there actually at, at a Dare Manor last week. Did you get into the? Yeah. Did you get inside the ropes as well with Tiger, or was that just Garrod? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, you no, did. No. Was that just Garrod? He will love that. No. <laughs> was that just Garrod? I was. Uh, yeah, Garrod's probably playing with Tiger this week now after his performance. <laughs> after his performance, and he also owns the Liam McCarthy as well. He didn't give it to anyone else. Already, was he <laughs> sleeping with the Liam McCarthy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no one else. That's the Grove Hegarty Cup. It's <laughs> uh, real. Uh, congratulations. We're going to leave you on the line there to, to hopefully speak to another one of your teammates. But enjoy the celebrations. There's no one here, but <laughs> oh, knocking just, some doors. So yeah, come on. Just, we, we leave. Just, just so we don't. Just so we don't leave it too long. Cheers, guys. Thanks. All right, fair play. Sir. Enjoy it. Uh, William O'Donoghue there on the line. Uh, we'll hopefully get one of his other teammates there in just a moment to speak to. OTB AM is brought to you live each morning by Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day. We're going to has been listening in to some of his former teammates there doing a pretty good job I would say Seamus of getting up early and uh, and doing their media duties. Yeah, if, if, if they're not polished at this stage uh, <laughs> I don't really know if there's much hope for the rest of us. Um, but Will is especially good. Uh, Dan the same what was well spoken but Will Will's, Will's always got a great head and shoulders and uh, on and off the field. Like, top man. Like, it's great having the lads with great heads on their shoulders. We want the lunatics on this morning. <laughs> who, who should we, whose door should we be knocking on? Oh, gee, a lot of them have left. Tom Condon is retired. Uh, so, uh, I know, in fairness, the, I think I think John Kiley has the, the lunatics uh, well sheltered, I think. So, I think <laughs> that's part of the benefit. What, the, what is the Monday morning like after winning in All-Ireland? Um... Yeah, no, the, the, the hotel the following morning is, is, is pretty cool. Uh, it's weird um, because you've got the mingle of the the supporters are staying staying in the hotel. Uh, you're coming down having breakfast. You're talking to the guy from Temple Glanton in West Limerick about how he travelled up with his daughter and that uh, uh, this is the best day of her life, his life, uh, everybody around him. And like that's that's the nature of it. Um, you know, like you know, it's it's true what the boys are saying. Like the, the 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 best part of it is the sharing of the win, the sharing of the win with the people around you, the sharing of the win with your teammates, the 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 really tight knit group that they have. Um, that's the best part because you you're you're working so hard from uh, day to day recovery sessions, gym sessions. Focus is always on getting the most out of your next. Uh, your next 90 minutes your next 60 minutes your next 15 minutes whatever you get uh, so it's uh, it's it's great to actually reach the end of it uh, and, and to actually just to, to revel in it Is yesterday potentially even sweeter for these lads than 18 was? Uh, it's hard to know so it's, it's funny it's always the old adage so the, the first one is the first one is so sweet and it's so it's so joyous a lot of the other ones, especially the defence of, of of a title, is 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 almost relief afterwards. Um, like even even like so, the, uh, the game was so tight yesterday. Um, you know when Blanchfield got the point uh, at the end of the game, when Walsh got the point at the end of, to to draw close to within a score, and a two point lead in hurling is an awful awful lead to have. So you know it's 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 tense, it's nervous, and then at the final whistle, it's just relief uh, and. Uh, so there's there's a there's a fair mix of that, and whether which is the dominating one, which is the dominating emotion, I don't know. Uh, depends on depends on uh, on your your journey and your story during the year. Mm. The the kind of the, the aftermath just felt very similar to, to eighteen yesterday. I guess maybe we just haven't seen it for a while over the last few years for for obvious reasons. Just like on, on an analytical level, like I mean, I'm not sure how much you're talking to the players in camp, Seamus, or even just from what you're seeing from watching the games. Has there been much of a development in terms of how they're approaching hurling at the moment under Kylie and Canark? Uh, so I would argue, I would argue that so the the, the game plan is the game plan. Uh, and, and has been since 17. Um, 
the I would argue that you know 2020 and 2021 were were, were almost perfection in the execution of it. Um, the reality is now Limerick are the most studied team in the country um, for the last number of years. Uh, everything that is done, whether it was in early in the league this year, was to stop their dominance on puckouts, was to uh, try and stifle the middle where you don't want that Limerick half forward line going off. Now, yesterday was probably it was the difference for us, uh, only for the performance of of our three and the half forward line. You know that that result isn't happening. Uh, so everything is done to try and stifle and stimmy that that Limerick team. Uh, so you know when you see every test that was given to them this year was was everything. Every so I would argue that was probably Kilkenny's best performance of the year. Um, that was Galway's best performance of the year in the semi. Claire peaked twice and still couldn't beat Limerick, and, and that was soul destroying. In, in the monster final, and it was you know mentally affecting uh, as you could see from their from their following games. So um, you know Limerick have gotten everything this year, and I would I would argue then you know the tide is rising around them. Uh, that Kilkenny team is better than it was in 2019, and that Galway team is better than it was last year. You know so and that Clare team this year really Brian Lohan had did an exceptional job and getting the best out of them in the monster. Um, now it was a, it was a pity how it unraveled from in the in the All Ireland series, but. It was Limerick got everybody's best shot, um, and so when you're talking about did they develop over the last few years, um, I I don't know. Well, I I don't know if if develop is the right word, but they have constantly been honing what they're good at, um, and I suppose if that's if that's if that's development, it's getting better at what you're already good at. Then you know they've been doing that. Seamus, they've players built for the big occasion as well, and none more so than Grow at Hegarty. And last year's final performance was exceptional. Yesterday was arguably even better in a much tighter game. He was quiet in the semi final. I don't think anyone doubted coming into this he was going to produce something, but from the quality of the goal early on, his ability to find space constantly to just play the game at his own pace. How have you seen him develop over the last few years? So. Giroud, Giroud is, is and, and, and a lot of people will be able to talk about Giroud, but like when he came off footballers, um, when he was part of that All Ireland Under 21 team um, back in 2016, uh, it was you know he he was he was raw. He had that incredible athleticism where he was running from one side of the field to the other, and you were wondering where are you going? Uh, why are you why are you running 60 meters? Uh, you know we, we don't play with a big ball here. But it was, it, it, you know, he stuck to what he what he was good at and what he had developed in the football field, and brought into her that incredible athleticism. Where keeping up with him is just an, an absolute nightmare. And then when the ball arrives, you have to grow an extra foot and a half to try and compete with him. Uh, so he managed to marry all that. And then if if anybody saw the hours that he spent working on his striking and his shooting, because anybody was anybody can tell you back in seventeen and eighteen. Um, he wasn't a consistent striker, and you were a striker when when you had it when he had it 65 meters out from goal. Um, he scored our last point of the game from over nearly 75 meters yesterday, um, with more to spare. So that, that's that's the result of relentless uh, work uh, and practice um, before training, after training. A guy who was just single-minded about being the best he can possibly be. Um, and that's that's easy to say because everybody wants to be great. Uh, you know, everybody wants to be the best the best they can be. But really, who who puts in the work? Who puts in the time to actually grow and develop the way Garrod has in the last five years? Um, he didn't score in the 2018 final, and in the last three finals, he's scored something like three twelve or something like that. More, more. Sorry, it's so it's it was it's three three fourteen. So. You know, go f- you take a look at that and, and take a look at at, an, at a person's growth and mentality for, for the big stage. That development, is that on the back of a conversation with some of the management or how does Grow come to that realisation that he needs to that, work on that? That's that's very, so there's there's definitely coaching. So, and we've got exceptional coaching in Limerick. Um, but uh, coaching coaching can be an echo chamber if, if you don't have a listening ear. So really it has to come from the individual. It absolutely has to come from the individual. So, even um, when so Garoud was playing wing back on the on twenty one team, the Mundial Ireland uh, on twenty one team. So you know he even changed his mentality in terms of 
the movement and the and the different skill set that's required for the forwards um, when he moved over to to, to the senior team. So, um, you know, I would I would put ninety percent of that on on his mentality and his his just innate competitiveness and drive because he's he's an incredibly driven person. Like he's uh, you know it's it's not it's not normal. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not, it's it's not every team has one, um, and he's had his ups and downs over the last couple of years. But you know, you can. It speaks to his own resilience that even through tough patches in the, like even in last year's semi final when he had a tough day and 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 was substituted, he came and scored two two in the Ireland final against Cork and and really kind of buried them with those two goals. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it speaks to his resilience. Like I mean, it's, it's it is really interesting. Like I mean, nobody would ever have thought he was a bad hurler or said anything like that in eighteen. But to go from yeah. that to one of the best players in in, in that team, if if not the best, is is pretty extraordinary. Like for for anybody listening, like what what specifically were the, were the drills he was doing, like to to try and improve that particular element of his game, or or what was the specific uh, work so, that he was doing? So this is one of the things. This is one of the things that was kind of instigated uh, by Paul uh, Kinnock in in around uh, again so seventeen uh, when when he was part of the coaching setup. Uh, was so before training, uh, the forwards uh, they have there's kind of zones uh, with about a dozen, two dozen slitters in it, um, either side of the field by around the 65s. You go in before training instead of pucking in twos across the field, which is probably the greatest waste of time in in our in our game. Uh, you deliberately pick and strike five balls on the run. Um, and uh, or take your scores. Nobody's watching you. There's no pressure on you. There's there's nobody taking count of what you've missed or what you scored. It's you just uh, as a as a forward practicing your striking. Uh, defenders were off doing something different uh, down the other end of the field. Uh, but uh, before you started training as a forward, uh, you had struck. You know, a lot of them would have struck in 30, 40 balls, uh, and they'd have kept score as themselves as to how many they missed. A lot of them did not like to miss. I can imagine. I can imagine it's a very, very competitive group on the inside yeah. there. Yeah, big time. Like, and that's kind of the scary thing when you think about what's going to happen over the next few years is that Kilkenny or Limerick were absolutely awesome yesterday and there are still different bits and pieces you can point to where there's potential improvement or the key and Lynch factor, obviously, uh, as, uh, as, a, as a potential improvement squad-wise. So, like, I mean, I mean, William O'Donnell, who just said there, they hate being asked about next year, given they won the All-Ireland less than 24 hours ago. But you must be thinking, Seamus, they've got a hell of a chance of emulating Kilkenny in the 2000s. Listen, so they're on top until they're knocked off. And, yeah. and that's the reality. And so, like, you're, you, it's it's the reality of being king of the hill. I said to a good friend of mine in Clifton there recently, I said that, you know, as nervous as I was about going up to the Kilkenny game, I, I said that, you know, Limerick are, are champions until they're, until, they're, until they're not, until they're beaten. And they're an exceptionally hard team to beat. Um, ask ask Claire uh, this year. Like if anybody if anybody had a right to say that, that they were good enough to beat Limerick this year, it was probably them earlier this year. But they were Limerick refused. Uh, I think Declan Declan said it yesterday um, that it was just stubbornness uh, that uh, that kind of won out in the end. That Limerick just kind of refused to lose. Um, and, and I think that's there's there's a lot of truth in it. Uh, it's it's that ability to. To dig it out and been so used to winning that losing really you you know we're, we're not it's it's not in our it's not in our mindset it's not in our vocabulary. Uh, William was saying that you know when John Kiley took over, uh, obviously nobody was talking about three in a row, four in a row it was about ending that long long wait, and I, I don't even know how much belief there was that that was going to happen so quickly. When you stepped away. From this team, having got that medal, did you did you did you think this team was going to go on to the greatness that they've gone on to? So there's absolutely no doubt that when I decided to step away in eighteen, um, uh, I first thing I had to make peace with was I I was convinced they were going to do it in nineteen, uh, and could I be happy sitting at home uh, when when they were when they were going to go again? So I was I was convinced that 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 was they were a special group. That even the landscape around them uh, and the teams around them, that the, you know there wasn't much going to to catch them or touch them. And the key thing for me then was the continuity of the management team that they have, a uh, phenomenal management team. Uh, you know that that John has assembled and curated, managed. Like it's a, it's been a long period of time uh, for Limerick hurling to have such a steady group of people. I know success breeds that, but you know there's commitments, there's commitments off the field, away from the team that can pull really key contributors 
you know, when I think of, you know, there's so many key contributors like Shawnee O'Donnell, uh, the likes of a Jerry O'Connell, everybody keeps mentioning because he's such a special, special man, yeah. uh, the kid man. Um, you know, the Conor McCarthy's, the liaison. So, you know, the, there's so many special people that when you take them out, there's a discontinuity there uh, and there's something different to change. You have to adapt to that change. So, um, you know, that has been that has been one of the key things to, to keep this moving. So, yeah, I, I knew they were going to be special. I knew that I knew I knew this was on the cards. Um, uh, I was surprised in 19 when, when when they won the league and won Munster in the fashion that they did, that they came up short in the semi. So, yeah. Um, you know, th- th- that was what this is what they're capable of. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, Seamus, you might stick with us on the line there because we're going to go to one of your former teammates there at the hotel again. I think we've got Dermot Burns on the line. Good morning to you, Dermot. How are you getting on? Morning, lads. How are we doing? All good. How are you keeping? You're up bright and early. The celebrations, obviously, uh, were pretty good last you're, night. You're after interrupting my breakfast, but sure, look, I'll forgive you. <laughs> Full fry up? No, no, I've bought a fruit in front of me. Oh, we won't jump to assumption, assumptions. <laughs> Wow, I mean, you're 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 still staying a model professional even as uh, the morning after winning in All Ireland. Ah, uh, it's grand, yeah, it's grand. So look, we'll keep the routine, you know. How are you keeping? How's Shamey? Is he on the line there? Hi, <laughs> Jeremy. Boy, how are you, Shamey? Morning. <laughs> you tired, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah. Look, it's fair me. Just sure. Uh, I'm tired just now and uh, take a boy for a while. I drove through. Look, you'd be on an awful I, high. I, so I drove through Patrick's well. I drove through Patrick's well, they're building your statue. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, sure so look. No, no, there's not more b- bigger legends than myself out there, so no. Uh, not this year, Jeremy, not this year. Sunday game, hurler of the year. The uh, personal accolades are going to be coming quick and fast. Ash, look at you. Yeah, that's, look, it's nothing you ever achieve out to, or set out to achieve. But look, that's, Nice little touch, I suppose. But look, is the main thing is we got the win yesterday and a uh, great team performance. So it was great. Yeah, it's been a hell of a season. Is uh, taking long range frees in an All Ireland final in Croke Park any different to what you're doing in training? Uh, no, I always just try to keep my routine the same, no matter where I am uh, in the field in Patrick's Well. Um, lucky enough and blessed to be in Croke Park. Um, no, just trying to keep the routine the same, no matter where you are or who you're playing or what the situation. Was there ever any doubt that you weren't going to put that one between the posts with that, that one right in front of the hill uh, in the first half yesterday? Oh, my memory now is scattered this morning. Uh, on your own yeah, 21, wasn't it? it, it oh, yeah, that, yeah, in the first half. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know who was outside me. I usually look for whoever's inside the inside line to make a run. So you can blame the lads and the inside didn't make any run. So I said, <laughs> I'll, give it, I'll give it a go. So you can blame the lads for that. <laughs> Um, like it, it was a remarkable like I mean there's not even what I'm wondering is there's not even a conversation around that is there you're kind of thinking wind at the back this is definitely going going over the bar I know I think Hago was outside of me and right. he just signaled he just looked at me and he just put the hand up like that and I was like jeez I was myself I'm a bit far out here Hago <laughs> um, but no look look probably just the right connection the right time and look at it there's never a wrong time to shoot Dermot there's never a wrong time to shoot my man yeah, yeah. Let the shooter shoot, Jimmy. That you'll be a shooter yourself now. Do you remember Seamus was just saying how you know one of the great things is being able to share the success uh, with family, with friends, with supporters. I'm just wondering though about the group and you know all Ireland winners often talk about shutting the door in the dressing room afterwards, and it's just the 35 players, the backroom team, the people who've been there through the long slog during the winter. Did you, did you have that moment yesterday? Uh, yeah, as shame as shame, you know, is like the most important hour or two. I'd say we're in the dressing room for two plus hours after the game. We were lucky enough to go back out onto the field and take a couple of photos. Um, obviously, due to COVID, the last couple of years, we didn't even get the cup to get that photo. Uh, spend a bit of time in the dressing room. Um, no, they are special moments, and like. If we could just take a second or two just to capture those moments in the dressing room or have a chat or the listen to the songs that are in place, just look around you, the smiles on the lads' faces and just because that makes it all worthwhile, you know. Mm. Is it, they're almost kind of like a, a, a... Do you learn about trying to soak those moments and do you get better at it over time? I've been very fortunate the last couple of years and I, like I always say we're blessed to be a part of this group. Um, from 18 and having the experience like a shame, Tom Condon, 
those lads, you know, coming through as a young lad. And you know, I suppose being one of the senior lads on it, like you do, you do kind of take a second to reflect on where you are at that moment in time, and just I suppose appreciate it and enjoy it. Like Seamus obviously mentioned there the possible statue going up in Patrick's Well over the, the mm. next few years. Like, in fairness, I mean, it is remarkable that Patrick's Well does have three centre points of, of that team, and obviously Keane not playing yesterday. Do yourself and Aaron and Keane get a quiet moment after these finals? Do, do you appreciate the, the, the parish and the club as much as you do the, the county side of things? Oh, always. Um, always. Like, we, we always have a we get our group photo. We're, we're very fortunate to have a, a couple of photos now in those situations. So there's stuff we look back on in years to come. But we always do get an opportunity to take a moment for ourselves and just, I suppose, appreciate one another in that moment, you know. Uh, Seamus is uh, Dermot Burns your hurler of the year well you know he, he's uh, but it was it, it was earned, it was earned before yesterday yesterday was the cherry on, the, on, on top but like and it's uncomfortable for players to talk about these things because they're not things you want to talk about they're not things that you set out uh, to actually do on an individual level Dermot just played his game all year and he was brilliant doing it and it's been one of those things for over the last three years he's been getting better every single year um, and this is probably the culmination of it so you know, without without Dermot's freeze in the Munster final, without Dermot's uh, resilience against Galway in the dying minutes, uh, and again, just long range the that he has. The only surprise I had was that when he took the free from the, the his own 21 yesterday that didn't go over the bar, I was, if I was a betting man, I would have thought that I was going straight between the posts. Uh, but you know, that's you know, he, it's it's the culmination of 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 again years of of, of growth developed. Into that. I think we're just having a slight issue with that line as well. Dearwood, what's the, the plan for the rest of the day now and for the next few days? Um, I'm going back up to bed now for a nap. Good stuff. <laughs> um, no, um, I actually don't have the schedule now. Like I, I, we have obviously the homecoming in, um, this evening to get it grounds and that's going to be really special, I think. Um, I know people keep referencing um, COVID, but we've been so fortunate the last uh, couple of years. But... I suppose I remember 2020 driving home in the car by myself after games and now we get to travel together on the train and go back and have the homecoming and celebrate with friends and other people so that's going to be really special so we'll take that as it comes this evening now. Well, Dermot, it's been great chatting to you. Thanks many for making time for us Likewise, this morning. Likewise, lads. Enjoy the ball fruit. See you later. See you. Cheers. Hello, Dermot. Dermot Burns there on the line. Um, I mean, he's, uh, I think we still have Seamus Hickey with us as well there. I think that's, like, it's unbelievably humble and that is something you get it from a lot of those interviews. It is awkward uh, talking to somebody who may well be the, the All-Star Hurler of the Year because I think their entire focus all throughout the year is on the collective and that's essentially what allows these individuals to, to progress and to excel on an individual level. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, like, is it Gerard Hegarty? Is it Aaron Gallam was, I think, the favourite coming into the final? But uh, Burns' consistency over the entire season, and again, when you go through the league, you go through the Munster Championship campaign. Like they've beaten everybody, they've beaten absolutely everybody. And I think uh, Seamus made a really good point there that you know Clare and uh, Galway probably had their best performances of the season, yet still they couldn't beat them. And likewise, Kilkenny in the final. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a hell of a legacy this team is leaving. Seamus, there's no real sense that they're going to stop anytime soon. Well, so like the. the Every year, every year, everybody gets a year older. So, like, that's that's yeah. the reality of it. Kenny was a very young team. Um, Cork Sorry. would have a very young team from their Sorry, Shane. Sorry, James, That line is just a little bit dodgy. We're going to try and dial you up there again and uh, and get you back on. Uh, just a few issues there this morning. Uh, you're with us here on OTBAM. It is nine thirty six. It's brought to you live each morning by Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day. We might try and get over to the hotel uh, for one last chat before we wrap up this morning. We're going to have plenty of uh, reaction over the course of the week as well. Plenty more analysis, and we'll hopefully hear from John Kiley between now and the end of the week as well. No, no, we're done with the hurling after today. Only <laughs> it's uh, Kerry week after this, isn't it? Oh, golly! Coronation. Wait, wait, actually, are we in a strange situation this week where you might actually want Kerry to win? Uh, no, I, some form of abandonment of the game would be the preferred outcome. Okay. I think right now. I was walking into the game last week, the Kerry Dublin, going like, "There's no, there's no, there's no good way this ends as a Mayo man when you have Dublin, Kerry, and Galway as the last three teams uh, remaining in the All Ireland." I know. I think. Um, I think I'm going to side with Galway. I think you're going to side as a as a fan. As uh, I think, yes. Um, 
you know, you are particularly insufferable. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it won't just be one all Ireland with Kerry. It'll be all we're going to dominate for the next decade. Uh, there's definitely going to be a statue built to David Clifford. So, you know, I spend a lot of time in Galway. Um, my family now live in Galway. You know, I've never had a massive hatred for Galway. You know, I'd, you know, it's the Ross Common side of uh, Connacht that I'd have more of an issue with. So, mm. listen, if, uh, if Galway go and perform, I'll be, I'll be delighted. I'll tell you one thing: the Limerick hurlers have uh, been anything but insufferable over the last few years. Any tip on that, Seamus, on how to stay humble as a winner? <laughs> I have no tip because uh, I'm on the outside <laughs> watching him. Uh, but the the reality of the situation is that you know, it, and I've seen I've seen it earlier this year. I don't know what you saw it like. There's people a little bit tired of of, of a team being on top. Uh, I know, and even the the punishments that Limerick were getting off referees, the commentary that they were receiving, dirty player this, dirty player that, um, different things coming in. You know, people people are kind of they get they get weary of the same team on top. Uh, it was the same with Kenny. Uh, when they were when they were going for the four in a row, for the five in a row, you know, a team that was so good, people were trying to pick holes in in, in how they were doing it, um, and that's that's part of it. And so it's really really important in those situations when you're the team in question that you stay really tight, and that's what Limerick have is an incredibly tight group. Nothing nothing leaks out of it. Um, they're really really well bonded as a group of lads. You know, they've so many foreign holidays now in the last uh, four years now that they that they don't. They're, they'd want to be best friends at this stage, so this that, that's kind of important. But you know, the narrative of of sports media and for you know sports fans in general is, you know, it a lot of people you know looking for a change yesterday. Um, mm. Even if that change was back to the uh, the dark figure and death star that is Kilkenny. Well, I I tell you one thing. Like I mean, you're you're right on that, but I I do think that the manner in which Limerick have won over the last three games in particular. Uh, is good for the legacy of them in the eyes of the neutral. Not that that matters a jot to anybody from Limerick, but I, I do agree with you. Maybe like if you compare them to, to the Dublin team of the last few years, just the, the way they were killing off opposition so easily. And I think that maybe kind of fed into the boredom that people had around them. The fact that Limerick were in a war against Clare, in a war against Galway, and in a war against Kilkenny probably makes them more likeable in the eyes of the public. Again, that doesn't matter one bit to Liberty. They don't care one bit what the, the neutral man thinks of them, but, but that, I think, might be the reality. Yeah, but, but, but it takes me back then to the... So, again, drawing parallels to, to, to what I know. Like So, the, the, the 09 uh, and 10 finals with Kenny Tipperary yeah. being you know, two of the greatest games I've ever seen in my entire life, um, where you, you just had... You had high quality, entertaining games, um, and you can't even put the pin in their collar, and had to produce something that was that was special within them to to get over the line in 09. And they took their licks in in 10, and then came back uh, in 11. So it's um, it, it's it, there is something endearing about you know a champion that that earns it. And like you said, having you know been undefeated in 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 Munster, beaten everybody in Munster, uh, it took extra time to do it. For, Clare, uh, and then beating the two Leinster finalists. Uh, you know, there, there, there really isn't, there isn't, there really isn't a, a championship gambit that you can run that 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 is better than what Limerick have run this year. Um, and, and so I suppose you know th there is a sense, you know, even for within Limerick, uh, in terms of the achievement this year. And John Kiley kind of alluded to it yesterday. You know, it's been a tough six months. It's been, it's been relentless, and uh, and and they've been getting both barrels for a, a, quite a while now. Yeah. So. It's it's uh, it's good to get to the end of it. We're going to go to one of your former teammates, uh, one of your last former teammates now for uh, another chat. It is Nicky Quaid. I think we have on the line live from the team hotel. Nicky, how are you getting on? Hi lads, how's things? Very well. We've got a beaming Seamus Nicky here on the line as well. Uh, <laughs> best stuff, best stuff. How, how are you getting on this morning, Nicky? Flying it, yeah. Sure. Look, I suppose you're can't can't be but happy this morning. It's a um, great feeling waking up like. What was the best part about the celebrations yesterday? Um. I suppose it's hard to put into words. Me, me, I suppose me for me, I love being, you know, maybe in a dressing room after just with the group. I suppose it's everyone that kind of has, you know, put everything in for so long together, um, just being in their company for, I suppose it's probably the ones of an hour, or whatever it is after the game. It's, um, yeah, those kind of moments are special, and obviously getting to meet your family and things then out in the field. There, those things are things that you never forget. You've got a bird's eye view of what's happening uh, throughout the seventy minutes. What was your sense of the the performance of your teammates? Um, I, I, to be honest, I thought we played well. Um, I didn't think we, we we performed well. We worked very very hard, and I suppose look, we put the pin of our collar by Kilkenny. We didn't really expect anything else. You know, they're, they're such a competitive bunch. Um, 
But I suppose we we I think I don't think if I'm right, I don't think they ever led. They got back level a couple of times in the second half, and I suppose for me, the fact that they couldn't get ahead of us was probably a little positive. And any time they did get level or within a point, we maybe pushed it to a point again, or maybe pushed it to two. Um, so that was I suppose a, a huge, a huge part of it for me, like just kind of showed our character and resilience. There's been a lot of talk uh, about the celebrations and how they've differed to the last couple of years, but also, uh, I guess from your perspective, the, the fact that the atmosphere in an All-Ireland final is so different from the last couple of years. I presume that that plays into things when you're trying to keep a cool head, especially over puck outs. Um, yeah, look, it does it, it does it, I suppose. Obviously, you, 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 you understand the time of the game and what's at stake and things like that, but I suppose, look, you have to trust yourself in the process and to kind of, I suppose... Uh, have courage and take the, some risks maybe to get the rewards and certain things and um, I just think I thought our, our half hour line especially yesterday was immense um, you know, that the work and the running that they did off the ball to create space and things like that I thought they were, I thought they were outstanding Yeah they were absolutely awesome uh, like I think as well from in front of you as well your own full back line your, your own set of defenders as a whole they did a pretty good job to say the least Nicky just in terms of quelling the influence that Kilkenny were trying to get out of someone like TJ Reid that big high ball going down just in front of you actually was their constant tactic yeah, and I suppose look, that's one they're very good at that. There's some very good lads in, in the air and things, and obviously, you know, we, we expected that. And to be fair, our lads dealt with it very, very well because it's not easy, you know, want the ball as they were raining in, and they have a lot of big men, and John like said, good lads in the air, so it wasn't easy. But I think I thought our lads were, were, were very good in that regard, and then very disciplined as well. You know, didn't give away many cheap frees, especially down the home straight. I thought we were very disciplined as well. Four All Ireland titles in five years, Seamus. It's fair to say, and none of this would have happened if it wasn't for Nicky in the semi final in 2018. Well, listen, none of it would have happened without Nicky in 18, 19, 20, and 22. Like you know, it's um, it, it's it's hard to overstate how important the the set piece is for Limerick and, and how important the start is in winning our own puck out. Um, you know, speaking to how well the half forward line play. You know how patient Nicky was yesterday, waiting for runs to develop. Because it was such a hot day, it took guys a few seconds longer to get back, settle, take a breather, and then make their run. Nicky was patient. He was patient, and you know, you know, from the history of, of Limerick goalkeepers, you know, being patient often is its own reward. Um, and, and Nicky is, you know, he's the rock that we build that on. So, you know, aside from changing nappies this morning, you know, uh, I'd say uh, <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday's, yesterday's performance was probably handy dandy be compared to it. I was going to say surely you deserve a day off but considering you've probably been out of the house four or five nights a week training for <laughs> the last nine months yeah. uh, he's, you, he's, he's running around here actually he's looking after me for a minute he's flying around the lobby here yeah <laughs> where the, young, the younger lads will be stretching this uh, you know you, you might get today and tomorrow the younger lads will be stretching it into Thursday Friday I'd say you might be expected back home a bit earlier <laughs> uh, sure look we'll, we'll, we'll play it we'll see how it goes we won't, we won't, uh, we won't worry about it no, we'll get over today first and we'll see how it goes after that Seamus touched on it earlier about you know when you are when you are the winners and the big dogs and everyone's coming looking for you they assess every part of your game plan and I'm wondering if you noticed uh, much of a difference in terms of the opposition on, on your puck out strategy um, it's hard to know I suppose really I suppose the thing you do know is at the moment is that you know, every team is definitely bringing their best when, when, they're, when they're up against us you know and Look, that's I suppose that's that's a privilege for us that you know we're in that position at the moment that you know every team has to bring their best to try and try and beat us and and like that so we're, we're privileged to be in that position at the moment. It just means that we have to get the best out of ourselves every day we go out as well to make sure that we, we come out on top. Given the record of the Quaid family, I dare say that that child uh, will be running around that hotel maybe in the future as well. <laughs> Well, look, so once he's healthy, that's all the that matters. I mean, that's all the that matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Goalkeeper, what age do you? So, but we give it about another 18, 20 years. So, that there might be a gap for somebody else to get in in between. <laughs> Is it is a year and a half at the moment? Anyway, so all right, yeah. give, we give, give him a couple of decades. Uh, there, you've been <laughs> in the play, squad, what, about... You play outfield for everything, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've been in the squad about, what, 12, 13 years at this stage. Can can you believe the heights you've managed to get to? I don't want to be honest with you. Sometimes you kind of have to pinch yourself like... So when I when I first got into the squad at Limerick, you know, winning one other would would have been, you know, I thought, I thought it might never happen for years. Like so, look to 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 be sitting here now and have one four of them, it's it's incredible, really. And look, it's not something I suppose that you kind of dwell on when you're in the mix. It's just going to go move from match to match and things like that. But I'm sure in years to come, when we sit down, we'll reflect on on the achievement, and it's it's obviously a it's a great feeling. Nicky, congratulations again. Enjoy the celebrations. We'll chat to you again soon. Thanks a million, lads. Thanks very much. Thank you. And of course, Seamus, thanks a million as well for being with us this morning. Appreciate it.
Yeah, it's a great feeling to be here this morning. Yeah, it is. Good stuff, Seamus. I can imagine. Uh, great stuff there from everybody at the team hotel there in Seamus Hickey, of course, over the last little while. Nathan, thank you for joining us in studio. We'll uh, have you on again over the course of the week. OTBAM has been brought